if you're looking for a bookkeeper, you get in touch with landscape, the landscape and bookkeepers and you have a call with them because they'll help you. They'll help you and they'll help you change your life. They've done that for me. Like if you want to be profitable, if you want to grow, if you want to succeed and you have to know your numbers, it's a catchphrase anymore. On today's episode of the Green Industry Podcast, we have, I believe, our first guest from Oregon. It's Dean Robertson. Welcome to the program, Dean. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Are you an Oregon Ducks fan? I am not an Oregon Ducks fan. Um, I'll probably get a lot of grief for that, but we're actually closer to uh, Boise State, so I'd say I'm a Broncos fan just because of geography. But to be honest with you, if I'm going to pick a football team, I'm going to say it's uh, University of Montana Grizz. Go Grizz. Well, I was talking to my bookkeepers, Dean, uh, Megan and Joey Coberly, and I, I, they have about 50 lawn care landscaping businesses that they see all the books, the numbers for. And I, I was asking, I was like, who are your most profitable clients? Like what, what businesses are out there that are, you know, maximizing these profits? And uh, they said, Dean out West. And so I really wanted you to share your business story and, and how you've gotten dialed in on your numbers. And, and obviously Megan and Joey think you're doing great with the profits. So, how, you know, that doesn't happen overnight. That, that took a lot of no, lessons not. you learned and intentionality. So tell us the story. So I started this in September of 2017, um, I'm a solo guy, and and you're right. It, I mean, to get where I'm at today was a when I mean, you know you've been in the industry. It's not an easy process, but it takes a lot of intentionality and just figuring out over time what that term "know your numbers" means. Um, I struggled with that for a long time, frustratingly, and just getting educated. But over over time, it took me a couple of years. I was working by myself, and then I hired a helper for a couple of years, and then three years ago, I brought on my first crew. But none of that matters. I always the reason I say that term "know your numbers" has been an issue for me is because I heard it for so many years. Like, if you want to be profitable, if you want to grow, if you want to succeed, then you have to know your numbers. Know your numbers. Know your numbers. You, it's, it's a catchphrase anymore. And it, I always got frustrated because I didn't know. I'm like, great, but what numbers do you know? What numbers do you need to know when you're looking at this stuff? And there, I, I'd say the two big the two big things that got me to begin understanding that. And I'm a long ways away from knowing all my numbers and having all dialed in was, uh, I used to listen to this podcast a long time ago. This guy, this guy named, I used to listen to his podcast every single day while I was out mowing. I'd, he I'd heard this time and again, know your numbers, know your numbers. And then he interviewed some people. He interviewed a couple, uh, Megan and Joe, Joey Coverly and uh, for bookkeepers. And at that point in time, I hadn't hired a bookkeeper. I knew that I, I'm not learning the numbers myself. I'm not able, I clearly I haven't been able to figure this out or wasn't disciplined enough to figure it out. I knew I needed a bookkeeper anyways. So I hired Megan and Joey um, that October. They onboarded me and that was probably three years ago, I think. And I think that year I did 117,000 in revenue going through the process with them. They've done a lot to teach me how to look at my profit and loss and my balance sheet and really educating me on my numbers and, and how to use those as metrics to see if I'm falling short here or where I can tighten the area. And then I ended up stumbling into an organization called ProSalt. And ProSalt is a business advisory slash peer advisory group. And there's, I think there's 80 other landscapers around the United States in it. And they're all about making you the most profitable company that you can be. And between those two, jo Megan and jo Joey Coberly with the landscaping bookkeepers and with ProSalt, I have begun that process of understanding numbers and profitability and my second year with Megan and Joey, Joey, the year before I joined ProSalt, I think I did 435. Last year we did 483. And this year we're on target to exceed 800. And that's just the top number. That doesn't matter if you're not profitable. I mean, it's great to have $800,000 in revenue, but it doesn't mean anything if at the end of the year you don't have any money. When I went to my first owner's meeting with ProSalt, I had done 435. We were sitting down, we were going over goals for the next year. And I remember telling one of the guys, I actually started crying because I said, none of this matters to me. I, I barely paid for a plane ticket to come out here for this meeting. I, great. I did $435,000 in revenue, but what does that mean if I don't have any money in the bank? Began a very difficult and began a very arduous journey of really starting to learn those numbers, how to be profitable. Um, that's a short answer. Yeah, that's, that's great. So you heard me a long time ago saying know your numbers and but it didn't it was just like a cliche and for you now to to be doing eight hundred thousand and and have months and months of looking at your balance sheet looking at your um profit and loss statement i'm assuming you guys look at the statement of cash flows as well what would you say to a guy who's in in that a lot of our listeners dean are fifty thousand to uh two hundred and fifty thousand revenue so that that year you were one hundred and seventeen thousand. 
most guys who listen to my show are in that they're in that world and they hear know your numbers, but they have the same response of you. It was like, well, I know I should know my numbers, but I don't even know what that means. What what would you say that means? Like give some actionable steps to somebody who's doing 117,000 and they, they go to buy a plane ticket and they ain't got no money. And they're like, I'm making six figures, but I'm spending it all. And, and this is not making, this is not working out. Well, I, Paul, I'm, I'm a little frustrated with myself because I knew you were going to ask that question and I had planned to be much more prepared, but we literally just had a staff meeting and we finished it 15 minutes before this. But the easy part of it is, is I actually, if I remember correctly, I'm going to attribute this to you. And that's not just trying to float your boat. It's the truth of it is that I, I vaguely remember that it was you that had said in one of your podcasts that one of the first people you should hire is a bookkeeper. And I wish I had hired a bookkeeper years ago because it would have helped me begin this process of understanding your number. Like, you know, two years ago, I was talking to Megan and Joey, we were having our monthly, our monthly meeting and we were going through it all. And, and I'm looking at trying to figure out how I can be more profitable because I didn't feel like I was as profitable as I needed to be. And we started looking at our fixed overhead costs and our direct overhead or direct overhead costs and our, and our variables. And because of that, I started seeing that I was spending a lot of money buying tools and my field labor paying my guys to be out in the field working, that's not going to change because we're not going to make money if they're not out there. And their cost adjusts with the amount of work that we have. So that's that's going to adjust. If I want to start being more profitable, then I have to look at my fixed costs, like my admin staff or the cost, the, the money I'm spending on tools in the shop. And and I actually brought my numbers down a lot. I just by controlling my spending on shop expenses because I was buying tools that I didn't need. And all of a sudden I see that I'm putting more money back in my pocket. Um, one of the numbers that, one of the things that we do here is we call it sales per hour, but it's really job costing, job costing the guys that are going out and mowing. And I have a target number that I want to make per hour for that. And then I, based on the revenue that that, that truck generates in a day, I divide that by the number of hours worked. And that tells me how many dollars per hour we're making our sales per hour. And if we hit above that, target number, then we know that we're profitable. If we hit below it, we know that we're not. And it's a, it's a key metric. We use that to say this week we were at $63 per, per hour per sales per hour. Last week we were at 45. The week before that we were at 60. And if it drops down, then it tells us something's wrong and we can focus in on that and say, okay, what happened here? And maybe we had a piece of equipment fail that took us longer. So it spent more time than that during the day. <laughs> Knowing your numbers, well, I don't think there's an easy answer to that. And I still don't have it all figured out. Believe me, I'm a long, long ways away from being able to answer that succinctly and concisely. But one of the things I have learned is that what you track, you get better at. Mm -hmm. And the more I track numbers, the, the better I get at it. And the better I get at controlling those and knowing how to adjust those and using those as metrics to know I need to make changes here. I need to make changes here. And I need to make changes here. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I want to... Uh reiterate something you, you heard me say you need a, a, book, a good bookkeeper back in the day and you got one that's awesome but i would m emphasize if you guys are out there hire a good Absolutely. bookkeeper because megan and joey were actually my third bookkeeper so i i had early on i did um right out of the gate i hired a, a company I, I i didn't know any better and i hired them but all they really did was take my receipts out of the shoebox and put them in the system. And, and that was that because uh, they, they did bookkeeping and accounting. They, they kind of did the whole thing. And like when I would go to ask them a question, they would make me feel like an idiot. Like they were just like, they're so arrogant. Oh man, it was horrible. And then eventually I hired somebody else, uh, but it wasn't, they had a full-time job as, a, as an accountant. And then they were just kind of doing this on nights and weekends. And I I got their leftovers and and I right. anyway when I switched to Megan and Joey in 2020 or 2019 2020 yeah it has been it would have been 2020 every single month since then um and and they take off a couple months around like Christmas or whatever but basically I meet with either Megan or Joey every month and we look at the profit and loss statement we look at the balance sheet we look at the statement of cash flows and it's like over time you just keep looking at these reports and it's like you you kind of gamify it for me I'm like how low can we get the expenses and how high can I get the income? And there was a month in probably 2021, Dean, where Joey's like, uh, your break even, Paul, is this number. Like to pay yourself the owner's salary that you desire to pay yourself, cover all your fixed costs. And, you know, every month you have some extra little cost. And to do all that, he's like, make this revenue and you're going to be good. And so once I knew that metric, once I knew that measurement, literally since that month, I've never missed 
that mark. I've, I've earned more revenue than that baseline for years because I wake up on the first of the month and it's kind of like a game to me. Like how quickly can we get to that number? Cause I know it's pretty much all pure profit after that. Hey, anyway, what's it been like for you to, 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 and I'm sure your, your meetings might be slightly different than, than mine with Megan and Joey, but what's it like to actually be combing through those numbers and, and them noticing something that might be off a little bit and, and, and making those adjustments? Well, it's, I was smiling the whole time you were talking about that break even point, because I, I've had that same exact conversation with Joey. I mean, he's done the exact same thing with me and it was probably two years ago. Um, and I didn't know that he was going to be doing it that day. He just said, we started going over some forecasts and stuff. And he said, this is your break even point Dean. This is where you need to get just to break even. And it did the same thing for me that now I know if we're not hitting that, then there's a problem. And anything we get over that is going to be you know, beneficial. But I've told Joey and Megan and Joey both this many times. And and I'll say it to every single person listening to your podcast, Paul. I agree with you. Find a good bookkeeper. And I will tell you this. um, Nobody knows me, so it may not mean anything. But I, when I say I love Joey and Megan, Megan, I love them because they have been, they've helped change my life. They haven't changed my business. They have changed my business. But more importantly, they changed my life because as a result of them educating me, Joey give me that kind of information like this is your break even point. This is what you should be working towards. Megan and Joey taking the time every month to go through with me on my profit loss, my balance sheet, my cash flow, like you say, and looking at those numbers and saying, you know, there's a problem here on, you know, what's going on here? Why are we spending so much money here? Because I can look at I can look at the profit loss sometimes still and and get dumbfounded because it's just a lot of numbers. But having someone like them in my corner that understands it, that works with that stuff every single day and can help me help me see that stuff it's been invaluable and i I told i don't have any problem doing this if you're looking for a bookkeeper you get in touch with landscape the landscaping bookkeepers and you have a call with them because they'll help you they'll help you and they'll help you change your life they've done that for me and yeah those meetings are invaluable yeah it's it's the highlight of my month i i actually look forward to it like when i know oh tomorrow i got my meeting I never know if I'm getting Megan or Joey because Megan's been pregnant and sometimes it's Joey, sometimes it's Megan. And uh, it's just been so helpful because the um, business side of things for me, one mistake I was making, Dean, is I wasn't paying myself like steady Eddie, you know, like paying Paul as if I went and got a job at like Costco or Target or whatever, they pay me, you know, like a paycheck and like it'd be the same thing every month or, or, or where, you know, pretty close. And I was just kind of willy nilly, just taking money out here, taking money out there and just like so disorganized. And and they've just helped me understand owner's pay. They've helped me understand my expenses, like having a self-control, like you don't need every tool. Is there a way that you could get this more, this purchase smarter um, and just really being more prudent and, and careful with my expenses? And so you've done all the hard work. I mean, you've changed your own life, but I, I can attest to how grateful I am to have somebody who's smarter than me financially and understanding what it actually takes to run a business. And um, every year since I've started working with them, my profits have grown. My, my revenue's grown as well, but my profits have grown and my personal, my personal income, you know, when it's all said and done, my personal income each year has, has increased and it's been so great. I'm so grateful to them for, for helping me as well. I could say I've said it a thousand times and to them, and uh, you would probably hear me say it a hundred more times talking to you. Um, I can't thank them enough for everything they've done for me, teaching me and educating me and walking me through this process. And just like you said, working with someone that knows those numbers and works with that stuff every single day uh, is, is powerful. And, you know, I'll come back to this again. There's two reasons why I'm where I'm at, where I'm at, and I'm not where I need to be. And I still have a lot to learn. That's always my caveat because I do not have it figured out. There's still tough days. There's still days that I stress about our revenue. There's still days I I stress about the money in the bank account and cash flow and all of that's there. But because of them and because of these guys that I work with and and pro salt, these other owners that are all the way, all over the country, these guys help me understand these are the numbers you need to be looking at. This is what you need to be doing. They're the ones that taught me that top number doesn't matter. 800,000. I had this, I had this meeting with my crew this morning. You know, that's some people think that's taboo talking about that kind of stuff, but I told them, I said, this, our goal is 800,000 and I want us, that's my hard line goal, 800 and we'll hit it. Um, we'll exceed it, but I'd like to see us hit a million. And that sounds like a lot of money and it is, but it doesn't mean anything at the end of the day. I want to take care of them. I want them to be paid. I want my team to be taken care of. If I'm not, there's not a financial benefit to me as well. I might as well go work at McDonald's or Costco or wherever because of these disciplines that 
Megan and Joey, really, Joey are helping with, and and these guys, these other owners and pro souls are helping with. This is the for me. This is the best year I've ever had in my entire life of having money in my own pocket. Uh, this is the first time in my entire life that I have been able to put money away and know that I don't have to worry about my own bills and know that I don't have to sacrifice to take care of my stuff so I can take care of the people who work for me. And it's because of knowing my numbers and, and increasing that revenue, but more importantly, increasing that bottom line number by controlling my costs. And you hear it all the time: increase prices, increase prices. But the truth of it is, is that's helped. Increasing our prices helps. Being and but being more efficient in how we work, whether it's in the office or out in the field, and discipline and spending. Because I like to spend money, Paul. Mm-hmm. I like to buy tools. I like to scan through and looking for good deals. And it's easy for me to spend money. And and I like right now. That's a conversation I'm having with myself, putting myself on a spending freeze mm-hmm. because it's July right now, but uh, winter is coming, and I want to make sure that we're set up for next year too. Um, controlling costs is a big deal. Yeah, I can echo that spend and freeze. I uh, <laughs> I had my meeting with Megan a few days ago, and this, she's like, "All right, we're we're gonna for a few months, we're gonna save money and not spend it, Paul." Because I, I I had a, a unusual month of expenses. And uh, I know the piece that you were talking about, like having personal money and um, when the business is healthy and having money set aside and, and not having to worry about money. And I mean, business is hard. You're always going to have to have an alertness to it. But when you have your bills paid and all of that, there's a peace of mind with all of that. And even for me with taxes, I used to get these surprise tax bills and it would stress me out. And now I'm so far ahead of the game. I, you know, in some ways I feel like I oversave. Now you don't want to oversave, but you know, you want to be kind of right on point with how right. much you, you save and, and, and put away for those taxes and then pay those taxes on time. But I ha- I have peace like um, September 15th is going to be here soon and my quarterly estimated tax payments are due and it's like I'm going to have them. You know, the, the amount that we've calculated and, you know, projected and forecasting and based off of previous quarters and just like the money's there. Like right now I'm on progress or I'm on track that I know it's not even till another couple months until the next one's due, but it's like the money's going to be there. I'm going to, you know, it's not fun to go to the EFTPS and pay no, boatloads of money. It's, it's, it's very, 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 very frustrating, but it's peace of mind when the money's there because I've been raising my prices and, and like, I want you to share about raising your prices because when you really have that sobering moment and you look at your numbers and you really see how, yeah, it comes in, but it goes out. It really does put a fire into your butt to, to raise your prices. And when you go out and you bid new work, you're you're confident in charging more because you understand that you have to. How, how has kind of the correlation been for you, Dean, of, of, of waking up to your numbers and then actually making your prices higher for existing customers? And then of course, new, new bids you're sending out. That's been a... It- it's been a tough process because I came into this industry with an employee mindset. And I'll, I, my thought was, if I'm making $20 an hour, back in 2017, I was thinking, man, if I can be making $20, $25 an hour, I'm doing good. And I looked at everything from that. And so I was pricing everything based on off of that. And you're not going to make $20, $25 and paying myself. We both know that that's not going to generate the revenue that I need to pay my bills, to run my business, and to pay me so that I can have some money in my personal bank account as well. Raising my prices used to scare me, still does a little bit if I'm being honest, but it used to terrify me because my thought would be, if I raise my prices to where I think they need to be, then I'm going to lose all these customers. And somewhere along the way, I was educated the idea that if I raise my prices 10% or 20%, whatever it is, whatever number it is that you end up choosing to raise your prices, you may have, you, you may lose a couple customers. But the reality of it is that means that you're still making the same amount of money and you're because you raise your prices across the board for everybody, but you're having to do less work, which is healthier. And and then the, the idea of when we're bidding projects, I I remember the first time I bid a project and it was over twenty thousand dollars. I remember thinking, there's no way this person is gonna accept this. Because I wouldn't spend twenty thousand dollars for this. And that was my problem. My money's not their money. And by that I mean they have a different valuation of their time and they have a different valuation of what this would, this project would do or whether or not they're even capable of doing it. So it gives me value. So it makes it okay for me to say, this is what I need for this job. comes back to that phrase of if you know your numbers and you know what to charge, if you know what to charge, you know what you need to make so that you can survive, so that you can run your business and not survive, but thrive and be profitable. And I think for a lot of guys, it's a hard mindset to get into. It's a hard shift. I mean, it's like, it's a hard shift to make because when I started, I was, I would go price a lawn and then they would, the customer would tell 
me, well, I'd say it was forty dollars, and the guy would say, well, the guy who's doing it before me would he was doing it for thirty five, and I'm hungry. I want more. I want more lawns. I want more accounts. So of course I say, well, I'll do it for that, or I'll do it for less. And then I end up hating that lawn because I know the whole time I'm on it, I'm I'm losing money, and I didn't know my value. And I didn't know what I really needed to make. And it wasn't until I really started learning those things that I started learning that it's okay to raise prices. And yeah, we might lose a couple customers, but in the long run, we're going to benefit from it. So, you know, to any of your listeners, I would say, because I mean, I'm in some of those forums and I read that stuff sometimes. And that, that argument always comes up or that fear comes up that if I raise my prices, I'm going to lose customers. And that's okay. What that means is that's not the customer. That wasn't your avatar customer. That wasn't your ideal client. Because if they're gonna if they're gonna they're gonna balance because of three dollar increase per week, then that's not who you wanted anyways. You want someone who values not just their property, but they also value your time. And if they if they do that, then they're gonna understand why you need to increase your prices. And you know, twelve dollars extra a month isn't something they're gonna get twisted about. That's so good. I, I can relate in the early years of being a business owner, I would do that, I'd go out to a property and be like, I really need this one. So I'm gonna, you know, I, I know I think the other guys are charging around here. I'm going to charge less just so I get it. I need to get it. And then it's just like you dig yourself a hole because now you got to go serve that customer and you're not even making any money. It's just wasting your your time and the wear and tear on your equipment. And now I'm the opposite. Now, when I go to send out a price, I do the opposite. I'll add a little bit more. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I, I, I'm going to add a little bit more and we'll, we'll see. And, and sometimes, yeah, I got to use a job or sometimes I get the, hey, I accepted it. Sometimes it's like, nah, but it's so much better when you you give a quote and then you get it and you, you're happy about it and you know it's going to be profitable. But I want to ask you, Dean, about efficiency because we've already hammered home the point Number one, know your numbers, get a good bookkeeper, understand your, 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 you know, the true financial health of your business. When you do that, you're going to realize you need to raise your prices. So raise your prices. But you mentioned the word efficiency. You mentioned being as efficient as possible. How has that affected your pro, um, profits? How, how have you guys, what are some practical ways that your business is uh, airtight, efficient, um, you know, getting, getting things done without wasting labor, uh, you know, time and labor? I, I wish I could say that we were airtight because we're not. And we, that's one of the things that we talked about in, in our staff meeting this morning is if it's, there's a difference between this has been a mantra of mine for a while there's a difference between being fast and being efficient and it's almost it's almost difficult to explain but in my mind fast is sloppy and just because we, just because we can speed through a lawn and get it done super quick doesn't mean that we did it well because um, generally speaking when you're trying to be fa as fast as possible because you got a heavy workload that day and you got 20 whatever however, however many lawns you're doing in a day um, if you're trying to speed if you're being fast then you're going to be sloppy so i talk to you guys all the time about efficiencies about Time spent from, we'll just talk about a mow crew, the time spent from getting out of the truck to opening the trailer and to getting a mower on site, on, on, on turf to making sure that you got everything you need so you don't have to walk back to the truck. You know, I, when I was on the, I probably say that I'm, I haven't been on a mower other than push mowing my own lawn because I miss mowing sometimes. I haven't been on a low, mower in, in two years. But back when I was, when I was in the field and I was mowing, I always kept string in my back pocket because if I run out of string and I'm at the back of the property, I don't want to have to walk all the way back up the front because that's like another three to five minutes of time wasted. And it's those little efficiencies. I mean, I talk to the guys and I know all your listeners are going to know this because these guys, these guys are doing the same thing I was. I get out of the truck and I look, what's the most efficient route for me to do this, this lawn? What's the most efficient way for me to mow it? And because I want to get in and out of here as quickly as possible, but I want to make sure that I, when I pull off, I've got a good product. And we've all heard about route density route density is a really big deal making sure that you have as dense a route as possible but also making sure that when you set up your route that it's that you optimize it so that you're not doubling back i mean windshield time windshield time is a, it's a big cost so i try to make sure that when we set up our routes that they're not having the guys aren't having to, to circle back anywhere that it's it's all about a big circle and because that windshield time costs a lot of money everything we do we try to look at that whether it's my irrigation guy going out and doing repairs we do the same exact thing for him what's his route and the reason when he first started working for me he was working part-time and i had a i had a truck for him and then that truck broke down and but we had repairs that we needed to do so i still need to get him out i put him in a little dodge neon that i had just sitting around and he was going out and doing irrigation repairs in a dodge neon and um, every time he would go to a place he would have to see what they needed and then he would have to drive to our, our vendor and he'd get the parts and then come back and he was doing that every every single time well as clearly we all know that that's not the most efficient thing so finally we worked into a place where we could get him a service truck now we keep that service truck loaded with the stuff that we need 
efficiency can mean so many different things for the mo crew it's making sure that you have everything you need but that you don't you don't have an abundance of stuff that gets in the way to slow you down um making sure that my irrigation guy has everything that he needs on his truck so that 90 percent of the calls that he goes to he's got the parts that he needs so he doesn't have to go driving all the way back into town to get parts efficiency is talking to my guys about how often they give me phone calls in the morning because that means they stop working and if they stop working and call me i have to stop working if i can't work on growing the business then that's less revenue that we're going to be able to get when i think when we think about efficiencies generally we think about efficiencies out in the field you know when we're mowing or but i think if you look at every single aspect of your business how your shop is set up how your truck is set up um, maybe maybe guys don't have a shop maybe it's just how their truck is set up what's the fastest way to, to load that mower and get the trimmer off without having to climb over 15 other things my first setup i had to move five things to i dropped the gate i had to move five things out of the way just so i could get the mower off and then mow and trim and then i had to put all those that stuff back on and all i was doing was wasting time it's a pretty seems like that would be a narrow subject but when i look at efficiencies it's a pretty broad spectrum of things that you can focus on and work on across the board for your entire business tell me a little bit more about your your shop and setup now <laughs> what's headquarters home base look like for you this year um we moved into a shop that is it's on two acres it's fenced um the building is about um, seven thousand square feet it's two-thirds of a shop and then we've got we got some office space and we actually have an area that we don't even use because we don't know what we would use it for right now but um it's been a game changer for us paul the last three years i've been working off of a little residential lot that i had bought in my neighborhood um we had two Connex boxes on it, and we had a 12 by 20 shed that I had converted into a mini shop, and we run it off of a generator on that. And we had a porta potty out there, and a, I had a dumpster for, for garbage service. And then in January, we moved into this location. Again, it's been a game changer to have a place where we can do all of our maintenance inside. Um, we can bring all the mowers in, get them worked on. We've got a big bay where we can bring the trucks in. For our for our trucks, what I've been doing is instead of wrapping them, we paint, we're painting them all white and putting some green striping on them. And then we're getting some decals put on them. So we were able to do that inside. I got an inflatable paint booth that I had purchased and you know, trying to save us some money and, and have our trucks stand out. Having the office has been phenomenal because now i got a place where when the guys do maintenance on mondays like they're doing today they pull the trucks up right next to the where we've got the water set up and i've got a blade grinding station set out there and they've got gantries that they can lift the mowers with the water's there so they wash the trucks sharpen the blades on the mowers wash the mowers clean their trucks out get all that stuff taken care of in one spot you know i heard years ago you have a place for everything and everything is in its place and when you're in a small spot like i was before it's hard to do that but now we have a place for everything and everything is in its place and the guys know when they pull up so that's an efficiency, Paul. The guys mm -hmm. pull up and they know everything they need to do maintenance on every single piece of equipment they have is is right outside that door and they pull up and it's all there. They don't have to go searching for everything. They don't have to walk around the shop, look in the toolboxes, trying to find the stuff they need. I want them to get out of the trucks, grab the tools, get the, get the mowers done, get the blades sharpened, get all that taken care of, and then, then they can move on. And now they're going out to do cleanups. And we have a small shop and then we got the big shop and then we have an inordinate amount of room to park our trucks and trailers and it's... I can't, I can't, I couldn't be happier. It's a game changer for us. Those efficiencies, they're everywhere. They cross the board, even into how you set your shop up and what you have available at your shop. Yeah. And I'm sure your employees uh, in general, I've got to tour a lot of different businesses and the ones with the nicer shops, the employees seem uh, like to have a better morale rather than go into some raggedy, you know, and, and when you get started, you got to start where you got to start, you know, whether it's renting a little storage unit or, um, you know, doing something simple. But when you got an actual shop and your employees go there in the morning, it's like they feel part of something bigger. And that's that's awesome. I had a question for you, though, Dean, about um, if you could go out to breakfast or coffee with the dean that was doing one hundred and seventeen thousand, um, you know, rookie dean, if you will, uh, what, what what would you tell him? Uh, raise your prices, knucklehead. Um, honestly, that's again, it's one of those things that we hear in this industry all the time. Raise your prices, but the truth of it. I, I, no, I would change that to know your value because it's easy in this industry to get tied into this race to the bottom because we want to undercut somebody so we can get get more accounts. But really all we're doing is we're undervaluing ourselves and know your value because the work that you do, the, the work that we do, it's valuable. And whether or not every customer sees it, the truth of it is, is we're doing something, we're providing a service that's valuable. Um, and if I don't value myself, then I'm not going to be able to raise my prices because I can't justify that in my head because I don't, because I'm not valuable. I don't value myself. That's, I think that's what I would say. Know your value, Dean. Um, and then coming with that is raise your prices and stop 
stop this race to the bottom because being the being the cheapest guy, that guy's not going to be in business in two or three years. I had a I had a friend who was a contractor for thirty years, and when I started my business, that's what he told me. That's one of the things he told me. He says, Dean, you know, if you want to if you want to be the highest guy, then you have to offer that premium service. You have to be able to justify that premium premium price. If you're going to be the lowest guy, you're not going to be in business in three years. You need to find your spot in the middle and figure your pricing out. And knowing your numbers is part of that. You can't know what you need unless you don't. You can't know what you should be charging unless you know your numbers. You can't know your numbers unless you're tracking them. Mm. And by tracking them, it's you know having a bookkeeper or or learning to to do that bookkeeping yourself so that you can know your numbers. One of the best things I did with Joey, Megan and Joey was I used Service Autopilot and I'd never had it synced to QuickBooks. They Joey and Megan were doing the stuff, doing all my bookkeeping with QuickBooks, but. It was, it was on a cash basis based on what's going through my bank. And I could never have an accurate representation of what I generated in a month because I wasn't synced to QuickBooks. And that was a difficult process. Believe me, that was a difficult process. But syncing my CRM, my service autopilot account, has been a game changer as well because now I can accurately see this is how much I'm generating in a month. This is our revenue for the month. And um, it's good, you know, I've said it, what you track, you get better at. And I will say this real quick. If you guys are using Service Autopilot, sync as soon as you sign up because it's a pain to sync service to sync QuickBooks to Service Autopilot later. It's a huge pain. Anyways, that's what I would say. Cool. Well, is there anything uh, we're leaving out here, Dean, that that you want to address or, or any other business nuggets or tips uh, you have for a green industry podcast listener out there? Absolutely. Um, look, I I have imposter syndrome, right? <laughs> I mean, I know. I know what we're going to make this year. We're going to hit over 800. And I know that that sounds like a really, really big number. And it is. I'm not I'm not downplaying that. But one of the things, like I'm in this group, I'm in the pro soul. These guys are making, I, I'm the lowest revenue generating company in this entire group. And um, so I, I look at all these guys that are doing two, three, four, up to 10, 12 million a year in revenue. And and I get frustrated with myself where I get, you know, it's easy, it's easy to fall in that envy trap. Um, but what I have learned is that every single one of those guys that, that are up there above me, they've all been in the exact same spot that I'm in and that I was two or three years ago. And just because someone else is generating more revenue doesn't mean that they haven't been where you're at. One of the guys told me, he said, and he was four and a half million a year or he was his, um, yeah, his gross revenue was like four and a half million a year. And he says, Dean, I have the exact same problems you do. I just have more zeros on the end. All the wow. stuff that you're struggling with, I have the exact same problems. I just have more zeros on the end. That, like you, you said it, wow, it was powerful for me because then I realized I'm not alone. And here's what I want to say. You're not alone. The mistakes that you make aren't exclusive to you. We all make them. There's people out there who are willing to be a part of your life and a part of your business that can help you get where you want to go. And when you have those moments of doubt and those moments of fear and those moments of failure, you need to understand you're, you're not alone. Everybody else in this industry has gone through this process as well. Where you want to go, whether it's you want to hit 800,000 or a million or 10 million, you can get there. You just can't give up. So good. Well, I really appreciate uh, your time today, Dean. If somebody wants to get connected with you, uh, how, how could they go about doing that? The easiest way would be Dean at DLCLawnSolutions.com. Delta Lima Charlie Lawn Solutions.com. That's my email address. It's a straight shot to me. Okay. And what what's the name of your business out there? Lawn Solutions. Lawn Solutions LLC. Okay. And that's I, in go ahead. I was gonna say when I started this company, I called it Dean's Lawn Care. And then somewhere along the way I changed it to uh, DLC Lawn Solutions. And then I just dropped the DLC for simplicity's sake. I'm in Ontario, Oregon, right on the border of Idaho. Literally, we service um, Ontario, Oregon, Fruitland, Idaho, and Payette, Idaho, about 50 minutes from Boise, Idaho. Uh, that, that's awesome. And, and if you go to sell the business one day, that Lawn Solutions name will carry a little more value than Dean's Lawn Care. That's why I changed it. Yeah, that's Seriously. very, yeah, that, that's perfect. Very, very smart. And uh, hopefully one day you can sell it for big, big money. That's the goal. That's the goal. Yep. Cool. Well, I really appreciate your time. I know it's Monday. You got to get get out there and, and uh, get after it. But uh, I, I'm appreciative to Joey and Megan for um, recommending uh, that we get you on the program. And it's nice chatting with you. And we'll, we'll definitely stay in touch and, and, and track how you, you know, your, your story continues to, to grow and blossom. Um, whether you sell the business one day or you just continue to make profit and um, pay yourself and, you know, financially have a, a successful 
uh, you know, investments and whatever route you choose, I feel like you're going to prosper in your future, Dean. So it's great to meet I you. That, sir. Likewise. Hey, real quick, before I forget, um, we have a mutual friend, another mutual friend, uh, Russell Skipper. Oh, yeah. Now, is yeah. Russell, Russell always tells me about this group he's in. Is this the same group that Russell's in? Yep. Matter of fact, I went out to see Russell for a site visit this month. Um, I went out to Atlanta and hung out with him for a, a day and a half, two days, and we went and said, yeah. Um, Russell Mon Monroe. He's in Monroe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Russell's good people. Yeah. Uh, we went to uh, the Equip Expo together. That must have been 2018. Uh, I think 20, 2019, 2018, but this is a seven, eight hour drive uh, from, he lives in Monroe. I lived in Lawrenceville. He yeah. picked me up and we drove up there. So I got to spend seven or eight hours. We went to Cracker Barrel and then obviously we came back. So another seven or eight hours and he was just, he was just on fire. So he's still doing fertilization and weed control. He is. That guy is dialed in. Uh, that guy is dialed in. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he certainly is. I tried to do Furt and Squirt for years. And uh, one day I went to Warren. His Warren's who Russell buys a lot of his product from. And I go in the Warren and I'm asking him about getting rid of this weed. And I was like, I got Dove's weed and I got this weed. And what do I got to do? And he's like, you got to quit, Paul. He's like, why don't you call Russell Skipper? <laughs> Russell's got all this stuff already on his truck. And I'm sitting there buying this and losing money because, uh, you know, whatever. And, 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 and anyway, I... I didn't know who Russell was really. And so I hit him up and he's like, yeah, man. And then I, I gave him all my yards um, and uh, he took over and he's a great guy. So, so uh, is, tell me a little bit more about this group because Russell speaks so, so, so highly of it. Uh, just, I, I, I got to get going, but I, I, I yeah. keep hearing nothing but positive things about this mastermind thing that you and Russell are in. So tell us just a little bit more about it. The idea is that, I mean, the idea is that these guys, Russell is actually in my small group. So um, he's one of the 12 people that I communicate with on a regular basis. But the idea is that they teach me, I share with them, we share numbers and we talk about these, this is where, you know, that's where I learned the whole idea of sales per hour. These guys are here, they're there to give me advice. And if I have a hard thing, if I've got something hard going on that I don't understand, I, I call them. And their whole thing is don't reinvent the wheel. If I need a spreadsheet on something, if I need some marketing ideas, then and they share it with me. It's, it's back to those efficiencies. They're trying to get me to my, my revenue goal more efficiently. And um, I, I had a site visit. The owner had come out here this, this last week um, to just review my site and our processes. And he's going to be writing a report, give me a recommendation of changes that I need to make so that we can be more profitable. I, when I signed up with ProSalt, they sent me to three people to talk to. They gave me three phone numbers to talk to. And the thing that really cinched me was these three guys that I've never spoken to in my entire life, all three of them said, ProSalt changed my life. Mm -hmm. They didn't just change my business. They changed my life. And um, that's a big deal because I don't want to just change my business. I want to change my life. And they're helping me do that. They're how, do you, how do you spell it? Pro, can you spell it? P-R-O-S-U-L-T. ProSalt. Okay. ProSalt. Yeah, there, there'll be guys that you end up, I know you got to go, but I'm going to, I asked Russell when I was out seeing him, I said, you know, I, I see the value in ProSalt because I know what it's done for me. I'm the revenue I'm hitting. I attribute to ProSalt and Megan and Joey, Joey, but Russell told me, Dean, the, the true value of ProSalt is the community of men that are in it, that are business owners in the lawn care industry that, that will help you and take care of you. And then I, someone told me a story recently of one of the guys that was in one of the small groups in the, in the pro salt groups and his, his wife had passed. And when that happened, every other member of his group drove from where they lived to where he lived hours and hours away. Cause he were, these guys are all over the country, walked into that funeral home. And when that guy turned around and saw all the men from his group standing there, he, wow. there was this look of, I'm not alone. And that's what, that's why I've said so many times, we're not alone. And I'm fortunate that I have this group and I know that, I'm struggling with something, whether it's personal or business, I can reach out to these guys that are in my group and they're there for me with advice, with, with comfort, with, I mean, across the spectrum. These are lifelong friendships and, you know, yeah, that, that we'll make. And um, Russell is one of, he's, Russell's becoming one of those for me because we've had some, we've had some really good and difficult conversations about life and business. So. That is awesome. Well, that's, that's good to know. And Russell's been, 
in my ear for years about this pro salt group. I didn't know the name of it. He probably had told me, but I just, he's like, ah, I'm in a group with these guys and they're all crushing it. And we all are just lifting each other up. And he's just, every time I, he talks about it, he just lights up like a Christmas tree. He's like, you don't understand. These guys are, he just, you know, makes them sound like they're all Warren Buffett and, uh, uh, just, <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's great to hear somebody else with the same testimony of when you get around men who are profitable and successful in the industry, that's who you want to be in community with and mentorship with. And I know you and Russell pay a lot of money to be in that, but it's it's worth every penny um, when you can get surrounded by those other men who are um, accomplishing and striving to accomplish what you're you're focused on. The first year that I signed up for it, I struggled with the, with the cost, but what I have learned is that, um, it's paid for itself. It's just like having, when I had my side visit and he came out here and I know that I had, you know, I'm paying for that, but I know that when I get that, when I get that report, it's going to pay, it's going to more than pay for itself. It's one of those things that, you know, it's like marketing, Paul, um, paying for marketing is very difficult to do, especially when you're first beginning. But the truth of it is, is that when you, when you market, when you pay for your marketing, that ends up paying for itself. It brings all that revenue in. And it's the same thing with this group. It's paid dividends. It's m more than financial. It's paid dividends. And um, I'll, I'll be in it until, until, I'm not in, until I'm not in this industry anymore. That's what I'll tell you. Yeah, until you sell your business for big bucks. Exactly. Now, um, exactly. I really do. I, I got to yeah, run yeah. real quick, but I, I do want to say something about that is that um, Joey, because I talked to him about my my marketing and consulting and at, um I don't know the word for it but but I, I pay coaches as well and consultants and 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 I'm not in the pro salt group but I'm in similar things that right. are very expensive and I asked Joey about it. I'm like I'm spending a lot of money on this he's like yeah but you're it's helping you there's a correlation between your success and what you're learning in these various masterminds and and whatnot and so I have to be careful I can't I can't do all of it all at once and you know. It, there's got to be some restrictions on on how much money I spend on stuff like that. But if you find the right group and the right people that can lead you, um, it, it is worth investing in for sure. So you know what they do for us, Paul? People like Joey and Megan, and people like this group that I'm in, at Pro Soul or the masterminds you're in, is that they read the label from the outside, and we're trying to read the label from the inside. Mm -hmm. They have clarity because they're looking at that label from the outside. And everything is disjointed for us because we're trying to read the label on the outside of that bottle from the inside of it. That's what they do. All right, Dean. Well, I got I to gotta run. Yep. This has been uh, great. I'm going to send it over to Mr. Producer and they will be on. Uh, he'll, he'll do all his editing and stuff and it'll be out next week. And then um, it will be up on YouTube in probably a week or so. Uh, so if you guys are watching on YouTube, smash that subscribe button. We've been recording these and putting them on YouTube and it's been fun to get, get some people watching over there. So, Hey Paul, thanks for everything you do. And I want to thank you personally for, it's because of you that I found Joey and Megan. Um, it's because of you that I learned, I learned a lot from you. I want you to know what you're doing is valuable and I'm grateful for it. And I know that there are a lot of other people who are as well. I know you got to go. I just needed to tell you that. It means a lot. And like I said earlier, a lot of our listeners are in that 117,000 like that's our, that's who we serve is that business. And it's so cool to hear folks that are there that listen. And then years down the road, you're 800,000. Or I just interviewed a guy the other day who's doing 2 million. It's like, yeah, I got my start listening to your podcast, man. And now it's like, it's so cool to see you go from that to this the right way. It's gives me motivation to keep showing up and doing these interviews. I appreciate it, Paul. Thank you. Well, nice meeting you, Dean. And uh, have, have a great day. All right. You too. Thanks, Paul.